So today I'm going to be super cooling water. And with this super cooled water, I'm gonna show you how you can instantly freeze the whole bottle. And then I'm gonna show you how you can pour it out and it'll instantly form ice. And then I'm gonna be showing you how water heats up when it forms ice. So before we start these experiments, one thing you have to understand is that water freezes at about zero degrees Celsius. But that doesn't mean that water will freeze at zero degrees, it means that it can freeze at zero degrees. What it needs to freeze at that point is a nucleation site. So it needs a little ice crystal in order to start forming. Eventually, water, if it gets to a low enough temperature, it will freeze whether or not it has a nucleation site or not. But if you get it right in the in-between where it's below freezing, but not low enough to spontaneously freeze, it's called super cooling. So today I'm going to be super cooling water. So first step is put your water in the freezer for around two and a half hours, preferably right next to Tillamook ice cream. Okay, and then once you get your water and it's super cooled, you need to create a way for it to freeze. So one way you can do that is to give it a sharp jar. And what that does is it creates a shock point and it creates a little nucleation site for water to start forming. So I'm going to grab my bottle from the freezer and I'm gonna hit it and it should form into one big ice cube. Okay, let's see if we can get it to work. There it goes. <laughs> Whoa, that's awesome. Just froze solid. And then the next thing you can do is instead of hitting it, you can open the bottle and be very careful to not jar it too much. And then you pour it out and you pour it onto an ice cube and the ice cube acts as the nucleation site and it'll start forming ice as you pour the water. Okay, now I'm going to attempt to pour ice. Oh, awesome, it's working. Look at that. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> wow, that's awesome, it worked. <laughs> Took me a long time to time that so this worked. The water was under pressure a little bit in this bottle and also it didn't have any nucleation sites to start forming ice crystals. And so as soon as I released the pressure, it was able to freeze, but it still didn't have any nucleation sites until I poured it on my little ice cube there and that gave it the extra order it needed to form this ice. So at the last is going to be my favorite one. This is going to be showing you how water freezing is actually exothermic. What that means is, if you don't know what exothermic means, it means it releases heat. So when you freeze water, it actually is releasing heat. Just like when you melt water, it's absorbing heat. So melting water is endothermic and freezing water is exothermic. So an easy way to see this is I'll get my super cooled water, I'll put my thermometer in it, and then I'll hit it and it will freeze and you'll see that the thermometer temperature increases when it freezes. So it's really weird to think about it that way, that as the water freezes, it heats up. Okay, so I'm going to try to measure the temperature without making it freeze. Oh, it froze. Okay, there it went. And the temperature is going up. So it was at negative 2.2, now it's going up. Only negative 0.9. So it's hard to see, but it did freeze in there. 
and it's still going up a little bit. Negative 0.6, negative 0.5, negative 0.4. So this is really weird. As it's freezing, it's warming up, kind of opposite of what you'd expect. So it should just get to freezing, zero degrees. It's awesome. Okay, so the reason that that happened, the liquid has more energy than the solid. So as a liquid, the molecules have enough energy that they slide past each other. But as a solid, they don't have enough energy to slide past each other. They stay in like a crystal form. So when you're changing from a liquid to a solid, some of that energy needs to come out of the liquid when it turns to a solid. And so that gets released as heat. So we think of it that you need to cool a liquid down to freeze it, but what that means is that the liquid is releasing its heat and then it can freeze. It's easier to understand when you think about melting. Melting needs energy for in order to turn the solid into a liquid, you have to put energy in. And so think about it the opposite way. In order to turn it from a liquid to a solid, you have to take energy out so the heat is going out of it. That's why you saw the water heat up when it froze. Hey, thanks for watching again. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did and you're not subscribed yet, consider subscribing for more awesomeness in the future. And remember to comment in the comments section with any questions you have or anything you'd like to see me do next time. And I'll see you next time.